I don't have much choice. Like I almost put every my project <laughs> yeah. into this portfolio. You <laughs> yeah. know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see it's like fifty one pages. <laughs> yep. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to LYH Studio. Today, I'm here with my friend uh, Tian Gong, and he's going to talk to us about uh, what to, you know, just about portfolios in general, things like what to include or not include, formatting, uh, drawing, and how to stand out with your portfolio. So, let's get started. Okay, yeah, I am Tian Gong. I have learned like in landscape architecture for like. Eight years, like I study landscape architecture as my graduate program in in uh, Tongju University in Shanghai, and uh, after that I went to GST to continue my landscape architecture study. And it's I mean I'm only one program, it's three years program, and after that I come here in San Francisco. Uh, and so are you working right now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. For like a uh, one and a half a year. Okay. Um, so today we're just going to go over uh, his portfolio. He's gracious enough to let us take a look and share with us some tips. Uh, so we're going to be able to look at the portfolio, talk through it. Uh, we're going to talk through some tips that everybody can use. So hopefully this is super useful for everybody. Before we get into uh, your portfolio, uh, I want to talk about some things like, um, you know, what. So when people are is, is doing a portfolio for school or they're doing it for work, uh, what do you think they should include in their portfolio? I think I, like in my experience, I don't know, like, uh, I usually think, first thing I usually think about like, you know, landscape have different scales and it can be large, it can be small, you can just design a plaza or you can design a whole park, you can design a whole city, plan for whole city. So. I would say my strategy when I apply for school, I would usually include more like different scales, like mm -hmm. to show the ability that like, I can handle different scales of work and let them know like I can do not only a plaza design or residential plan uh, design, but also like more park or city. I can do different type of work and I also show my interest in different field. Okay. I think that's, that's my strategy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So like including different scales, uh, would you say you also go down to, you know, like detail all the way up oh, to, sure. you know, master planning analysis, that whole. Sure. Definitely. Whole like thing? in, uh, in, I think most school work is mostly focusing on the schematic design, but when you really apply for a job, they don't want to see, they don't want just see your right. talent in graphic. Yeah. things but they also want to see what you really can do like for construction drawings so something more practical skills so definitely include the sum of that into your portfolio would help to apply for a job that you really like right <clears throat> and so if we if we look at Tiangong's portfolio and just kind of uh, flip through it can you maybe tell me about how you organize um, like what you put in your portfolio you know like what comes first what comes next and then how you organize the images. Uh, is there any tips or, or tricks that you would like to, to highlight in terms of a format? Okay. Yeah. So I think in general, I, so it's, for me, it's very simple. So it's just mostly based on a uh, timeline. Okay. Like what's the most interest, recent work. Yeah, Cause the first pages is usually the people who view your portfolio the most focusing on right so just do the most recent work that's that's for me that's the my strategy so it's not my like be the best but yeah okay so i would put some my recent work to at the beginning and uh also i lay out my whole portfolio like to a more larger scale and to medium scale and to then mm. the last one is a more smaller scale just show a different scale like this one is a, a more plot more like a plaza the smallest scale right in my portfolio and the the very beginning one is a big like city or like a park design that's the more bigger scale and then at last i will include some of my construction drawings as more smaller smaller scale i see yeah so okay so would you say like so in your portfolio is it like um so you have both the the like when you actually did the project 
in, in time, but you also have it organized in, you know, like if this is a larger scale, then it can go first and then it yeah. goes smaller and smaller and smaller. Yep. Okay. And for like individual scale, like for, for diff- like for the specific one, uh, project, I would do like, first I would analyze the plan, like analyze the site. Hmm. Then I will show how I come up with my design. And then the last thing is I would uh, test my design fits my analysis and fits the site. So it's I like see. three different like state status. Like first analyze then my design, then test my design fits my analysis. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we'll go into maybe we'll, we'll get you to talk about, you know, a couple of your projects in a little bit. But um, before that, I, I want to ask a question because I, I, I feel like a lot of people struggle with this is when you're scrolling through a portfolio, how do you know, you know, how do you break one project from the other project? Is there a method in which, you know, you can tell, oh, this is the end of this project. And then this is the beginning of the next project. What are, what, what did you use to, well, actually I see. Yeah, it's again, pretty simple. <laughs> like, you, yeah. like you can see, like it's just the, just one single page yeah. shows the name of the project and then maybe a picture showing the, main topic of my project and some 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 words about that. Right. So, yeah. so so when we're talking about words, how how important do you think words is in a portfolio? So like, you know, if we were to say like a there's a ratio between words and images, yeah. what would you say a healthy balance between words and images is? Uh on my side, what I'm thinking is just a yeah. personal thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would prefer images more than words. I agree. Yeah. I my strategy is if the images can tell the whole story, then you just don't use the word. Right. So I think I think word is also you know an element to balance the images out. Sometimes you oh, know yeah. you need to. Yeah, yeah. So like I think what you did here is is perfect, right? You you have a you have a great image, mm-hmm. and you have kind of like the words to balance it out. And I think it's it's great that you know. Everything's like the word is also like a form, right? It's mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's formatted so it's a it's a nice yep. square. So I think that's that's a that's a great way to kind of go about something like this. In terms of how many pages you should include for each project, you know what I mean? Like so uh-huh. uh, for for this project, how do you know how many pages you should put? So a lot of the companies they have you know restrictions on how many True. pages you have you can have and yep. how many uh, megabytes it, it can be mm-hmm. so how do you balance you know how many pages you put in one project and how many projects you put into your portfolio okay yeah i have to say like i didn't do a great job in my file organizing <laughs> those okay. but that's definitely true like yeah, you yeah. first come up with a general layout of all your or your like projects like you want to include in your project. I would say my I don't have much choice. Like I almost put every my project <laughs> yeah. into this portfolio, you <laughs> yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, I see it's like fifty one pages. <laughs> yep. But if you look at my portfolio when I apply for school, it's just like four project. Yeah. And uh cause some school have a limitation of pages. Like I know like used yeah. to be like limited the portfolio page to fifty I think so. Yeah, pages. So. so that's that's yeah. That's that's hard. Like every like drawing is like, oh, I love my drawings. I <laughs> I put a lot of effort on my drawings. But yeah. why? Like yeah. But again, yeah. Just show what you think that can most testify your skill. Like show your skill. And uh, I think the I think the most important strategy is before you really making your portfolio, think about the layout first. Okay. You have to write your like, just have a general outline. It's like, I want to do this, I want to do that, and this. Just think about what you want the people who will in your portfolio know about yourself. Like, I want to show my like great interest in ecology, which is hot spot, like hot topic. Yeah. When I for apply sure. for the uh thing, so I usually like I in my portfolio applying for the school I include this four different projects that's all related to ecology like mm. designing a plaza designing a park designing a waterfront in different scales so it's it's pretty simple but it, again if your all your portfolio is telling one single or one whole story that would be I think easier for people who view your 
portfolio and understand what you really want to show and what they can know your like better. I think that's yeah. I think that's a good point. And and to add on to that point is. Like you, you obviously want to show your your interest in things, but what about your your drawing skills? Like how how important is you know showing off that I can do a rendering,、uh-huh. I can do、uh, you know construction drawings or something, I can do analysis. Like how would you balance that、uh, versus you know what your interests are? Yeah, sure.、Um, here, I would think、uh, sure. Now those. Uh, some I saw a lot of like images with like ex-、uh, information explosion with very fantastic like skills of rendering、yep. and、uh, like lay all that everything. That's sure. If you have those images, that would be fantastic. You have the skill, but those images on my side just not trying to showing off too much. I would say like. What do you mean? What I, do you mean? I I agree. Like. I would think,、uh, I don't know.、Uh, in my experience, like who did like、uh, interviews for me, like my school and the companies who build in my portfolio, I would say those image, like remember those、uh, like diagram images, diag- like renderings, great renderings, they are telling the one single thing, like you can really do a great graphic、right. thing. Yeah. And、uh, another thing is. You also need to show how the process, like right, those、yeah. those are a destination. Like you, this is the end. But you should also let them know how you come up with those drawings, and you need some di- progress diagram to show, like just show the pro- progress, and、uh, you should balance those two parts. Like I have great skill in graphics. I also have a. Ability like show the whole process how I make this, and、right. they are more interested. Sometimes they are more interested in like the process. They they will ask you, wait, how you make those fantastic drawings?、Like、yeah, how you come up with those analysis?、And、yeah, dude, I I feel like I always get those where like they they see something and then they ask like how did you how did you get that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's it's usually true because I don't show it and people don't know how you know these forms got to be and. Most likely, you have went through a very long process to get to you know where you are and how you got this project to work. Hey, do you want to make a portfolio like Tian Gang's? Well, he's using InDesign to compile everything. He's using Photoshop and Illustrator to draw everything. And with my link down in the description, you can also get Adobe Creative Cloud, which is kind of the one-stop shop for all of these graphics and compiling your portfolio. You kind of get the latest and greatest of everything. And the best part is for students. You get sixty percent off. So, click that link in the description if you want to get a Adobe subscription going. Uh, what what would you say is the difference between your、uh, portfolio for you know trying to get into a certain school versus your portfolio for trying to get into work? Is it different, or is it kind of the the same the same deal? Uh, in my portfolio, th- those are different. Like when I apply for school,、uh-huh. I. All my project is just schematic design. It's just、right. to come up with an idea、yeah. and、uh, don't think about too practical stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like I just, yeah, I just do whatever、right. I want. Yeah,、just、show I have this idea. I'm trying to make this idea come to true. But when I apply for a, a company, I my thoughts is they are not just caring about your ideas. You, yeah, people love talented. Like students、mm-hmm. and workers, but they also looking for some people that can really do the job. Like do like, right, like professionalism they, kind of. True, like they need to, they need you to draw the CAD. Yeah, they need to, they need you to build the sketch up model, the yeah, yeah. Rhino model. So,、yeah. is uh, you already have those graphics rendering, like graphic, like really talented graphics and talented ideas, maybe. It's better to also include some, like, like something that can show like you can do a really good work on like CAD, on Rhino, right? On SketchUp and on everything else. You think that's the firm I need you to do? Just show them you can do this. You are not only come up with great ideas, but you can also do some practical work. Right. That's my strategy. I don't know 
I, I'm sure like some people really like if you, sh they really need you to come up with great ideas. That's another story, but here I, I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. So I mean like chances are when you're doing entry level work, it's, it's not about, uh, well, it, it's more about production than it is, um, you know, high level thinking and, and solving problems. Okay, so uh, now Tang is just gonna take us through one of his projects. Is it is a good idea to include, you know, a lot of individual projects or? I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. that's yeah shows your ability. Yeah, true. And even in your team projects, it's good to just you know include uh, as many of your work as possible instead of that's true. Yeah, what what the group did, because uh, they will ask you. They will ask you during interviews and stuff. They'll be like, which one did you do and which one did your team do? So yeah. you're gonna have to do that anyways. Okay, anyways. I'll, uh, I'll let you take it away. Okay. Uh, so this is a project that I did in the uh, second year at GSD. And uh, it's a very, very simple project. It is, yeah, it's very, very simple. It's just uh, uh, the site is in uh, Franklin Park in Boston. Mm -hmm. And it's a big park and uh, it have very great biodiversity there and uh, when I doing the research first, I found like there is already a, I, I really got some really great images with all those species, the birds, the insects and the different type of animals there. And I was so shocked and uh, there's a great, really great mapping that caught my eyes, which is they have every images and showing where they took that images. Oh, no, every image of each. Is it uh, in here? No, no, no. But I, not yet. That's okay. the, that's theirs. My hands <laughs> not mine. So okay, I cannot okay. use yeah, that. You can't but, put it in. <laughs> yeah, but that's a really, really great mapping. And I was so shocked. And I looked into the group, and uh -huh. uh, it turns out it's just twenty people there, and they make those very, very impressive, very great informations, and they got a website there. So right. I was impressed, and that helps me a lot when I doing the whole side analysis of this Franklin Park. Okay. And then because of them, I come up with my idea. I was shocked by their power, like just 20 people to, did this really great work. And this community, the power of this community is really impressive. So I was thinking maybe I can do something like act, help with this community and more act, act, activate this community and mm -hmm. maybe with them help and they can help me and I can help them use my design. So that's what I call this urban landscape and community. I want my design can be a bridge that connect this community and uh, the urban and the uh, Franklin Park. Right. So I see that you also included, you know, in the description, do you usually just have type, area and, and location? Is that something that you always include in all of your projects? Yep, yep, that's, yeah, that's for every project is follow the same format. I see, okay. Um, is there anything else that you, you know, wanted to include in here for, for description or that you left out that maybe other people can include or is do you think this is a good, like, trio to, to go uh, I think like? that's based on your strategy, like the story you want to tell. Like for me, I, I'm showing, like, I, my interest in ecology design yeah. and I want to show my skills in different scale the skills in different scales. Yeah. So I will include the project type, which shows its ecology design. Yeah. Okay, so, and I want to include the area, which shows a different scale. Like this one has this area, that one has that area. So right. it shows a different scale. So it's correlated with my strategy, like showing the different scale and my interest in ecology design. If you have different like strategy, you want to tell your own story, that definitely is something you need to think about. That right. What things you should add here. Yeah, true. I, I mean, this reminds me of that book by by Big, where they they lay out their entire book by temperature. So, um, it's it's all temperature based. So they go from like hottest to coldest and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. So I mean, there's a there's a lot of like different interesting strategies. But yeah, that's that's great. Okay, so let me know. Do you want to flip through it? Should I? Oh, I, I can do that. No, no. <laughs> yeah. You, you want to do it? Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Okay, you can do it. Okay. Okay. So, beginning. The first beginning is. Analysis, like I said, I follow the strategy. Like first, I'll analyze the uh, the site yeah. and show my findings through my analysis. Then I'll show how my design correlated with my analysis and how I come up with my design. And at the last, I will show my design fit the site and fit with my analysis. I see. Yeah. So the first is the site analysis. It's uh, cause 
the whole thing is I was trying it, it like in short my my design is I would like I have seen many species and the biodiversity there so I was trying to do something that can help with the bi biodiversity mm -hmm. which also help with the community so my strategy is creating a vernal pool okay. it's a seasonal pool okay and uh, it has water in like summer and uh, spring and uh, it doesn't have water in like uh, winter and okay. autumn so, yeah so it's a vernal pool because of this water like feature like water like like thing so it had it can like be more like there will be more animals can live in this atmosphere so that helps with the uh, biodiversity mm -hmm. so the first thing is just try analyze analyze the whole site and find out where is the suitable place for creating this vernal pool so this is how this site analysis did i analyze the the rain condition analysis the topography like which which area is catching the water and which area is not and uh, i analyzing the the surface stream and also the the underwater underground water line wow just okay. to see where is the best place for creating this vernal pool thing because we are doing the design for the community but as a designer my role is use my knowledge just to find a better place mm -hmm. but creating the vernal pool itself is a simple practice that they can we can do that together so th that's also a like connection with the community but here yeah it's just a uh, uh, science analysis just sh uh, those diagrams just showing how I come up with finding the better place for creating this vernal pool okay yeah so go to the next one so here it's my like envision for the future like first like it has to three different status like first this the first section is showing the current condition and then I showed how I redo the topography, the topo here, mm. and created the vernal pool. And then the last, I will show how the vernal pool influenced this whole site, this this surrounding areas, like uh, catching more like uh, animals here and uh, changing the topography there again. And also, people helps with this, creating the whole areas. So those three sections, those the. My envisions shows my design for the future. And then next one is a plan. Just those come to the, the status like I'm showing my design. This this is based on my previous analysis and uh, here I how I come up with the design and it shows where I create this vertical pool and uh, how the planting goes there. So the planting mm -hmm. is really pretty important. Like we yeah. we have to find the suitable plants like based on different uh, slope, based on it will have sun or it have shade, and also based on the water like features, the, like water conditions. There. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I choose a plan based on the condition there. And also if you see the section, I was trying to like, I went to, uh, cause I was trying to create a vernal pool and I went to a vernal pool in Boston mm -hmm. and I feel how that feels the atmosphere it will feels very foggy and wet there right so in my section I was trying to create uh, that atmosphere yeah so people see that kind of, I hope people see that kind of feel that no, dude, I was trying sure. to the atmosphere like oh the vulnerable is not just for the animals here people can also like it's it's a great experience like when I uh near the vulnerable like the every the scene is really great so i was trying to copy that scene wow. and show the feelings and then if you look at the right side those are very uh different like uh, uh diagrams showing how people can really create the world pole. right like it's a community engagement project like so i was trying to create a brochure like tell oh. people tell the company like they can do this first and then next step next step next which is step by step they can create the vertical pole themselves and i will hand this brochure to the people i Sorry, see people so it's like here. Yeah. community engagement you know you get people who who are passionate about the community they yep. come and and they do that wow that's cool yep and just tell them how how that we can do that together right it's just it's, it's a interesting like, so can you and i we go outside we Definitely, yeah. Because <laughs> why I choose vulnerable is it's very common, and right. uh, 
easy practice. Right. Like every people can really do that. I so see. So that's why I choose this because I think that's not just designer is not the only one who can design this site, but people who live there may be a better designer than us. So yeah, sure. we just do that together. Yeah. And uh, then coming to the last stage, yeah, I show how my plan will look like and just test this design, this added element, the vernal pole fits the atmosphere. I there, see. And that fits my analysis. Like it's not like something that looks ugly or something that doesn't help at all, but it just show it can really help them creating the make this site better mm. just and also on the top i also create a poster like just <laughs> encourage everybody That's like, cool, yeah. let's, it's like do, let's do that together yeah it's it's an interesting project i think the only pity is that i don't get the opportunity that really connect with the community the if i have right. time i would definitely tell them the whole story mm. and actually when i present this uh project uh uh, when I'm presenting the project, uh, the school invited the Franklin Park community oh. to our presentation, and we did connect a little bit after the after my presentation. Yeah, and uh, I was invited to their group, but uh, yeah, you know, it's it's a pity that we didn't keep the connections. I but see. if I got time, if I got chance, I would like. This would have yeah. been a would have been a thing, man. Yeah, yeah. So. So I guess this is the end of the, the project here. And then if we, you know, flip the page, we'll know it's a different project, but um, this is great. So, so again, you started with, you know, analyzing the site and then you started with, you know, why this would be a good idea. So, um, and then you basically went through, got the idea, did the idea, and then you showed, you know, this is a great idea. If this was in here, this is what it would be like. And, yep. you know, it shows like a better version of what, what it was and you're engaging the community. That's awesome. I think that's a that's a great way of I guess going through and doing uh, you know any sort of project introduction. So that's great. And the, the four, I guess the renderings are what uh, Lumion renders. Yeah, those are Lumion renders. I see. Okay. Um, awesome. All right. So that's it for our portfolio session. Thank you, Tiangong, for hopping on. Um, and make sure you guys, if you guys got anything out of this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. Uh, leave any questions down in the comments as well. I'll try to go through those, but yeah, see you guys next time.